Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Today I've got a three round mock draft. We're about two weeks away from the NFL draft and it's kind of surreal. It's coming up so fast, but we got a new mock draft, so uh, three rounds, so we got to get into it. Starting off with Aiden Hutchinson, number one. I just, I don't feel like this, I feel like this is the, the home run pick for them. And not in the sense that he's got the most upside, that's Trayvon Walker or Kayvon Tibet, but it's the safe pick. It's the locker room leader, and in that sense, it's the, the home run. Trayvon Walker, now this is the one you're looking for the grand slam, right? I don't know why I'm on a baseball kick, all these baseball analogies, but Trayvon Walker has definitely got tons, crazy, crazy upside. He's been linked as high as number one. He's very versatile um, in the defensive line. Personally, I'm higher on Kayvon Thibodeau, but, you know, I try to mix in some realism. I think this is very realistic. Three, Iki Ikwanu. I like him at right tackle. I love him at guard. Probably his best tape is at guard. He is a menace at guard. I think he's got lots of upside, um, and I like it at three here for the Texans. Uh, four, Kayvon Thibodeau for the Jets. Sala is an absolute sucker for the trenches. KT... I don't know how NFL teams are going to feel about him, right? Because, obviously, the guy's got all the talent in the world on the field. Just on the field only, he's probably easily the second best player in this class. Maybe first. Debatably first. But, there's just the... If he doesn't love the game of football, you can't instill that in someone. That's not something you can really teach. So, that's the problem. Five, Evan Neal. I think this is a home run pick for the Giants. Uh, Evan Neal is a monster of a man. They would love to have him protecting Daniel Jones. So him or Iki Aquani, even Charles Cross, uh, if you're a Giants fan, you, you'd be thrilled with. All right, looking at the next five, we got Malik Willis at six. Yeah, this one, once again, uh, they've been linked to Kenny Pickett a lot. I, uh, I could see that because he does have the highest floor and they need win now, but... I feel like with Pickett, if he just has a mediocre season year one and you know he doesn't have the upside, and this is a coaching staff that's trying to keep their jobs, front office too, I feel like you want a guy who, if Malik Willis has a mediocre year but shows flashes of the upside he has, I think you're more likely to keep your job. I mean, we saw in Chicago that that doesn't always work. but Sauce Gardner at seven. Yeah, I think about Gardner as high as three. I, I've done that pick in other mock drafts, but he falls to seven. I think Giants, you know, James Bradbury replacement makes. All right, Garrett Wilson at eight to the Falcons. Biggest need. If you want a receiver, I think you got to jump the Falcons. Everyone is mocking this pick because it makes all the sense in the world. Nine to the Seahawks, Derek Stingley. I think this is exactly the kind of picks the Seahawks have to be making. They're in a rebuild. They need great players. Stingley could be a phenomenal player, maybe the best player from this class. He's got that kind of upside. 10, Drake London. I think the Jets are looking for a receiver. I do. I think Drake London fits Zach Wilson's skill set a lot. He likes throwing those jump balls. Drake London's going to come away with him. He turns 50-50 balls into like 75-25 balls. He's amazing. 15, or <laughs> 11, Kyle Hamilton to Washington. Kyle Hamilton's a really tough player to mock. He could go really high. He could fall outside. I don't think he falls below maybe like 15, maybe not even 12, but he he could fall. So there's some people you know worried about his athleticism, how, if he can play over the top. I mean, he's very versatile. I think he probably can. So we take him there at 11. 12, Trent McDuffie. Yeah, ideally, I think if you're a Vikings fan, you want Derek Stingley. If you can't get him, I do like McDuffie. He's a little undersized, but I'm not too concerned about that. You know, with McDuffie, though, you either love him or hate him, so a lot of people are going to hate that pick. 13, Jermaine Johnson. Great uh, great floor, and I think he's got actually underrated upside. I think Johnson, I would not be surprised if Jermaine Johnson, this is a heat hot it take, very hot take, is the second edge rusher off the board. And I haven't seen anyone doing this. I might do this in an upcoming mock draft, you know, like a weird scenarios one. But you're just, you're getting the safe pick with him. I think he's the second safest edge rusher in this class, just behind Aiden Hutchinson, who's going to go one or two. So maybe a team like the Texans, maybe they just want good players. They take him at three.
that's an interesting thing. 14, Jordan Davis, an absolute unicorn. This is the highest I think he'll go, though. Just tons of upside. Trent McDuffie was off the board. I usually like that pick. 15, Jamison Williams, um, another big upside guy. Could be the best receiver in this class. A deep threat, speed like no one else in this class. I think the Eagles would really like that. All right, next five. Charles Cross falls all the way to 16. In all reality, I think someone's already traded up to get Cross if he starts if he falls outside the top 10. Maybe even two number 10 with the Jets, they trade up. Or 11 with Washington, but Saints get him here at 16. 17, Trevor Penning. Yeah, I think they traded in front of the Saint, or Chargers because they think they, they're going to take a tackle. Their biggest need is right tackle. 18, George Karloftis. This was a tough pick. I thought about going Devin Lloyd, but linebackers, you know, not as big of a need after free agency. I don't know. It's tough. I went with the pass rusher, George Karloftis. 19, Chris Olave. I think this is the dream fit for Olave. I think he doesn't really fit for the Packers. Um, don't think he'll make it all the way down to the Chiefs. I love this pick. Uh, I love the fit, too. 20, Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett is my QB4. I'm going to be honest. But I think the NFL's a lot higher on him. And if he is going to go somewhere, the Saints is probably the best fit. I don't think they're looking for a quarterback. Steelers, probably a close second. right? So he's going to have some weapons. He's going to be in a good place to succeed. All right, next five. Devin Lloyd, 21st to the Patriots. Yeah, him or Leo Chanel. I absolutely love the pick here. 22, Traylon Burks. This is the Packers kind of receiver. If he's here at 22, I think they take him. If not, I think they wait till 28 and take maybe like a Christian Watson. I don't know. I think the Packers are going to be willing to, you know, quote unquote, reach for their style of receiver, you know, the bigger receivers. Andrew Booth uh, missed out on a lot of the athletic testing for through this draft process. So that's a bit, you know, that's holding him back. But I do think it's good value here at 23. Zion Johnson at 24. Cowboys have been linked to offensive line a lot in this class. So I, I'm going to buy into it, buy into the rumors. 25, Kyir Elam. The Bills are in a great place this draft because they don't have a lot of major needs. Corner, however, is one where they could definitely do with some some more players there. So we take Kyrie Elam. All right, Devontae Wyatt at 26. This was a tough pick. I didn't know where to go here. I just went best player available. That was Devontae Wyatt. Could be a sneaky, sneaky spot for a quarterback at 26, though. 27, Kenyon Green. Him or Zion Johnson. Whoever's on the board, I love that pick. I don't mind Daxton Hill either. either. Uh, Bernard Ryman goes at 28. Usually he's not on the board here, so I, I was in a weird spot with the Packers. But I end up taking him there. Uh, they've had a lot of injuries on the offensive line immediately. He's got crazy upside for long-term replacement at tackle. With the Chiefs picks, we could go Sm Sky Moore, who they've been linked to a lot if the top five receivers are off the board, even though I prefer Jahan Dotson. And then Arnold Abichetti. I think he could easily sneak into the first round. I feel like he's really underrated. Final two picks of the first round, Tyler Linderbaum. I think this is his floor to the Bengals. I just love the pick. Then Sam Howe at 32. I feel like 32 is a quarterback spot. The Lions, I love quarterback at 32 for the Lions. A lot of people hate it. I Specifically Sam Howe because he's got such upside. He can sit this year. He could be great in the future. Uh, second most upside just behind Malik Willis. Round two, starting off with Daxton Hill. Yeah, I think... This would be a steal for the Jags. He could go a lot higher. Christian Watson, 34 to the Lions. I'm, Christian Watson's got such upside. Maybe the most upside out of any receiver in this class. I know. I said it. He, he's he got crazy upside, so Lions willing to bet on that. 35, Leo Chanel. This guy's another guy with great upside. He's got great physical tools. Uh, the guy's physical specimen. Not getting talked about a lot, though. Boye Mafe at 36 to the Giants. Uh, this is an interesting one, an interesting prospect. He's a bit older, and he also doesn't have that high of a floor. So that's kind of concerning. But the upside is crazy with Boye Mafe. So I do I do like it here at 37 or 36. Speaking of 37, though, another crazy upside pick with David Ajabo. Coming off the injury, I don't know really where to place him. I do think he's probably top of the second round now. I really liked David Ajabo before the injury, though. I think he was... He was top 10 on my board. I really liked Jabo, so I think it's a steal here for the Texans. All right, Travis Jones goes 38. This is low. I think he could easily sneak into the first round. 
Tyler Smith, uh, they've got him listed in the interior, maybe immediately, but I think he can play tackle day one. 40, Desmond Ritter. I feel like this is another quarterback spot. Desmond Ritter is my QB2. So getting him here in the second, I like that. Then Abraham Lucas, a really NFL-ready tackle. I think he's got a high floor. Drake Jackson, uh, more of a high-ceiling guy. His best snaps, like whenever you watch him, there will be a play, and he will just, oh my gosh, he, he's amazing. They don't get in a slump, then maybe a big slump, right? So there's ups and downs with Drake Jackson, but Colts buy in on that upside. This could be a receiver here. I just didn't like any of the guys on the board. Next five, Lewis Seen, 43 to the Falcons. I really like Lewis Seen. Um, you need, you just need whatever you can get, really, as the Falcons. Tons of needs. So I don't, I didn't go quarterback here because of that. 44, Nakobe Dean to the Browns. They were linked to linebacker whenever they had a first round pick. They were linked to Nakobe Dean, actually, whenever they had a first round pick. So if you can get him here in the second, I think that's really good. All right, Kyler Gordon at 45. Yeah, I uh, just love the corner. Ravens didn't take corner first round. I believe I actually forget who they took in round one. Oh, that's right, Jordan Davis. So you take Jordan Davis round one, you get your corner round two. Uh, it's close between him and Roger McCreary, although I do give the edge to Kyler Gordon. Jahan Dotson is a steal at 46, an absolute steal. Top top 40 player on my board. Love his route running, probably the smoothest route runner in this class. Then Roger McCreary to Washington. I love this pick as well. Uh, could be receiver here, but I went corner. All right, 48, George Pickens to the Bears. Yeah, you need a tackle and a receiver with these two seconds. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, maybe not in that order. They, they could switch it up. All right, 49, Jaquan Brisker to the Saints. Yeah, I think they're ready to win now. I think that's why they traded up in the first round. I think they want to win. Jaquan Brisker is actually really good, really good player. I think he could help you do that. Tariq Woolen is a physical specimen. Another one of those guys. There's a lot of those in this class. The Chiefs, you know, they've got an actual pretty good roster. They might opt for a guy who can step in immediately. I don't know. They've been linked to some corners. So maybe they get a vet and then they let Tariq Woolen, you know, maybe come in if there's injuries or something. But be the long-term guy. Oops, I got it. They can, they're willing to take a chance on that. All right, 51, Jalen Petrie. This is quite low for Petrie, but... Um, he's got tons of versatility in that secondary, and I like him to the Eagles here. He can play slot corner, maybe. I think we missed out on a corner in first round, so maybe he plays there. I don't know. It, it's kind of interesting. Gives you some options, which is what they need, really. Uh, Nicholas petit Ferrer, 52 to the Steelers. Yeah, you took your quarterback round one. We need to protect him. I think tackle is their biggest need over the interior. I think they invested too much in the interior to go that early with an interior guy. And I do like Nicholas Petit Ferrer quite a bit. All right, 53, the Packers go Sam Williams. Yeah, I think you need edge rushers. Sam Williams out of Ole Miss. I went back and watched him actually really recently. I watched him against Charles Cross, the Mississippi State game. And I liked what I saw. Uh, I really like Sam Williams. Kind of a riser for me recently. Uh, I believe he went to the Senior Bowl but got injured and then did good at the Combine. So, yeah, I like him here at 53. As a Packers fan, I, I love this draft so far. Jamari Stahl, your really underrated interior offensive lineman, goes to the Patriots, gave away Shaq Mason. So maybe this was Belichick's plan. He really likes someone here. Brees Hall goes 55. Um, yeah, for me, <laughs> I don't like taking running backs early. Hence why the first one comes off the board at 55. In all reality, don't be surprised if there's a first-round running back. There almost always is. Brees Hall's really good as well. I mean, even on my big war, he's top 32. Does that mean that the position... But I don't take into account positional value quite as much as other guys, so... All right, 56, Perrion Winfrey. Interior defensive lineman goes to the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I love Perrion Winfrey. All the interior defensive linemen had crazy combines. Kenneth Walker goes 57 to the Bills. Everyone is mocking this. Everyone. So, got to join the bandwagon, I guess. Matt Corral goes 58 to the Falcons. So this is an interesting one. I wasn't planning on taking quarterback with the Falcons. I was really on. I'm going to be honest. I was like, no, it doesn't make sense. And then Matt Corral was still on the board. And I just could not let him fall to the third round. That is criminal to Matt Corral, who is a lot better than this. 
Uh, quarterbacks always go higher than you think. Uh, he'll probably be off the board by the first 50 picks, probably maybe five quarterbacks. But they get him here at 58, just too good a value. Chad Muma goes 59 to the Packers. Yeah, not. I wasn't sure what to do with this pick. I thought about Trey McBride here. But Chad Muma is a top 40 player on my board, and he was still on the board. And I couldn't resist. You know, I just went best player available, which is really what I think the Packers should do outside of receiver, right? Receiver could have went here, too. I really like Alec Pierce. I, th- I really thought about Alec Pierce, but Chad Muma is just a beast. All right, Alec Pierce comes off the board at 60 to the Bucks. Martin Emerson, 61 to the 49ers. Need corner bad. Uh, need interior offensive line bad, but we go Emerson here. Jalen Tolbert, 62 to the Chiefs. Uh, get another wide receiver. Pair him up with Sky Moore. I think that, uh, along with MVS, definitely helps fill out that wide receiver room a lot better. All right, final two. Trey McBride, 63. If he doesn't go at 59 to the Packers, I really like this fit at 63 as well. Then Brian Osamoa, just really good value there to the Broncos. All right. Round three, we're almost done. Here we go. Kalandish, 65 to the Jags. Yeah, they didn't go tackle in round one. Uh, you're, you've got some question marks. Cam Robinson still on the tag. There's some question marks there. I like Deesh. I think it's really good value as well. Then we got Christian Harris, linebacker to the Lions. I like uh, the Lions taking a linebacker at 34 if, like, Leo Chanel's on the board. But we end up waiting. This linebacker class is really deep. Like, you can pick up some guys round three, round four that are going to be really good instant starters. So I think because of that, linebackers are going to end up falling. At least one goes in the first round, I think. But I think a lot of them are going to start falling. Uh, Sean Ryan goes to the Giants. Yeah, they said they're going to protect Daniel Jones. I believe him. All right, Nick Cross comes off the board at 68. The Texans need good players. He was the best player available, right? Their roster... Got a lot of holes. Uh, I wouldn't mind going receiver here. You know, hindsight. Nick Benino at 69. And Benino, I believe we took Trayvon Walker earlier. And it you can never have too much pass rush. I love the uh, addition of Benito as well. I think that could be a mean pairing. He can be, he's going to be some uh, Batman's great Robin. And if that guy is Kayvon Thibodeau, that is a mean, mean pass rush duo one day. All right, Dylan Parham at 70. Yeah, Jags. Uh, I believe we took Kellen Deesh right up at the top. Yeah, we take Parham here, get two solid offensive linemen, uh, help out Trevor Lawrence, get your best five out on the field, wherever that might be. I don't know how it could be. Parham's got guard center versatility, so a lot of options now on the offensive line, which I think <laughs> Trevor Lawrence would definitely appreciate. Kingsley and Agbury to the uh, Bears, you got to buy in on the upside with him, and that's what they're doing. Logan Hall, you're kind of, you know, he's a bit of a tweener, but if you think he can play off the edge, okay. Maybe you think he is just going to be a tweener. I don't know. Seahawks take him. They can, Pete Carroll can figure it out. Daniel Falele, this is an interesting prospect because the upside is immense. He's a giant, like six foot eight. But injuries could be a problem. You don't know if he's going to live up to that. He's very raw. Colts, they take a chance on that, though. Channing Tindall, another raw upside guy, but so athletic to the Falcons. I love that pick. All right. Next up, Cam Taylor Britt. Not a lot of people might not know who this kid is, but I, I really like him. All right. Cameron Thomas, another tweener. He's like 265, I think. Coming off the board to the Ravens. Um... It's tough, but I do think he can play off the edge. I think he can be good. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. DeMarvin Leal, uh, another tweener, ironically enough. They're just all coming off the board. But Leal, he was like a first-round prospect, and then he's just been falling and falling and falling since about the midway, midway point through the season. But I do think... You know, this could be a guy we look back on and we're like, dang, we should have bought into him. You know, I think he could be a guy who makes a lot of teams regret their choices. John Mechie coming off to the Browns. Yeah, they've shown some interest in wide receivers, and I don't think they'd be mad at this at all. Then Quay Walker 
Channing Tindall and Nicobe Dean's teammate at Georgia. The linebacker core was stacked. Another athletic freak comes off the board to the Chargers. Uh, I've seen people taking linebacker like as early as round one for the Chargers. I don't think it's that big of a need. But Quay Walker was my best player available, and the upside is crazy with him. So I think it makes sense in the end. All right. Damian Pierce coming off the board at E. Love the way this guy runs. Absolutely love it. He is, he, he's got a limited sample size in college, not a lot of production, but he is crazy, crazy talented. Darion Beavers, a, kind of a run on linebackers here, going to the Giants, then my Jay Sanders, edge rusher, uh, Cincinnati. Then Brandon Smith, another linebacker, uh, Penn State, I want to say, and this is another kind of upside guy. There's a lot of those guys at the li- in this linebacker class. Fidarion Matisse going to the Steelers. I like the fit of Devontae Wyatt in round one if they don't want to go QB or tackle there. But uh, we end up picking up a guy who's actually still really solid here in round three. Calvin Austin at 85. Yeah, uh, this pick I'm unsure of, but I just, he's a gadget guy, right? That's that's what makes you, same thing with one Dale Robinson, I think. Maybe Robinson can play on the outside. How, how much do you value those guys? I don't know. I took them here in the 80s. Then Ed Ingram to the Raiders. Got to get the some interior help, and uh, he does that. Provides you some versatility as well. Wendell Robinson to the Cardinals. Give Kyler Murray a weapon. Maybe keep him happy. I don't know about that, though. Greg Dolchich, I really like this guy. Um, he's my tight end, too. Uh, it's close between him and Jelani Woods out of Virginia. Tech, I want to say, but uh, yeah, I, I give Dolchich the edge to the Cowboys. Justin Ross, uh, Clemson wide receiver, uh, dealt with some injuries, kind of unsure. That's why he's down here in the third round. Talent wise, though, second round, I'd say. Comes off the board to the Bills. Troy Anderson, another one of these just good linebackers, comes off the board in round three to the Titans. Then Pierre Strong Jr., my RB4, I really like him. I know you got Fournette, but you need a long-term solution there. Let him be mentored for a year or two, then let him come in. He could be mean. Jelani Woods, 92. Yeah, we passed on Trey McBride earlier. We take Woods here at 92. Cole Strange to 49ers. This pick kind of just depends on if you think he has guard versatility. I'm going to choose to believe he does. Kirby Joseph, 94 to the Chiefs. Get a hopefully long-term uh, solution at safety. Marcus Jones coming off the board to the Bengals. <sighs> Wait until round three to address corner is bad because you don't know if he's going to be you know, an immediate upgrade over like uh, Eli Apple, right? But out of Houston, I do like him. I don't know. It, that's a tough pick. I uh, wish I would have addressed it earlier. just didn't see a spot. Max Mitchell is actually a steal here for the Broncos. Love that pick. Alante Taylor comes off the board to the Lions. Then Isaiah Likely who combines the blocking and receiving ability, which I really like. Could be an immediate uh, impact player for the Saints. Josh Pascal out of Kentucky, um, I think, uh, has SEC experience. Um, just uh, kind of an interesting guy. I could see him sneaking into the round, round two, but he fell pretty far here to the Browns. All right. Zach Tom goes 100. This is a guy I actually really like. I think he can step in at guard immediately if you want. Uh, could be a long-term tackle. Michael Wright, corner to the Eagles. I think this is the second corner they've taken. Yeah, we didn't get like a true first-round corner. I guess that's only if you count Petrie as a corner. Uh, so instead, we're going to take two mid-round guys. Hope one of them works out. Damone Clark to the Dolphins. I think this is a deal. I think this is your own first pick, though. Uh, maybe you want a sexier pick than a linebacker, but it's all right. Chiefs, they have a lot of draft capital. Uh, probably going to trade a lot of these picks, but I didn't know where to go. I went James Cook out of Georgia. Darion Kennard uh, to the Rams. I actually really like this pick. I think he's pretty versatile across the offensive line, and you know, you need some help there. It's probably one of their bigger needs. Finally, Kevin Austin Jr., the last pick. In this draft, I think 49ers would be really happy with him making it to them. But, oh man, that was a long one. That's uh, that's all I got. So that's my three-round mock draft. 
And uh, if you guys have made it this far, gosh, it's been a long video. You better subscribe. All right, guys. I'll see you next time.